In just a few minutes, you're going to be seeing a video of my students doing a math lesson pertaining to the elements of differentiation. In this math lesson that you're going to be seeing, I'm going to be looking at working with products. In the, in the area of curriculum elements for differentiation, you have three areas. You could do content, you could do process, or you could do products. With my students, I chose this for this lesson, products. A differentiation is an approach to teaching based on the premise that teachers adapt instruction to students' differences. Okay, guys, we've been working all week on, <coughs> on problems, mathematical whodunit math puzzles. Can anyone tell me what the purpose of these puzzles are? Thomas? Well, they're pretty much like a, a, a math question to try and build our math skills. Okay, build your math skills. Anyone else have something else they want to say? The purpose of these math puzzles. Kayla? To teach us new things in math. To teach you new things in math. Teach you new ways to do things. Teach you new ways to do things. But what, isn't this reading? Mm -hmm. Aren't we reading? There's always going to be a problem. There's always going to be something in, a, in this story that you're going to be reading and that I'm going to read to you and then you're going to be reading it along with me in your group. <coughs> then we're going to take some time, and each of you, each group has two questions. Group one and three, you have specific questions that I'm going to give to your group. Group two and four, you have specific questions I'm going to give to your group. And group five and six, you have specific questions. You are all receiving the same article. We're all reading the same story. But the outcome is going to be different because I'm looking for different answers to different questions. As I told you earlier today, this one is going to be exciting to you because we've seen it before. But I don't want to tell you any more than that other than wait till you find out the answer to the problem that calculator figures it out. Are there any questions that you have of me before you begin your two questions? Okay, begin. I'm going to give you four minutes. That's two minutes per question to answer these questions. Begin. How does a teacher know how to differentiate? Well, a lot of times they look at their students' um, input in class. They can tell when their children aren't focused. Possibly sometimes even writing notes in class. Sometimes even when their children aren't staying on task. They might be standing up, doing things that are off task. They might be finding ways to, to get others off task by trying to um, have little jokes or be or say, oh, Mr. Levitt, I don't understand this would be the greatest way. But most students, when they don't understand a lesson, tend to find other ways to tell us that they don't understand something other than saying, oh, Mr. Levitt, I don't understand this lesson. You're going to need to choose one person from your group that's going to answer their six questions. So there's one person from each group that will make these announcements. Would you read me the first question? Nicely and loudly. One. One of you. What clues were provided that showed that the professor was not a math teacher? Okay, what clues were they? He answered the math problems wrong because he didn't use the order of operations and he also stuttered when he introduced his name. Okay. Nicely done. Group three, would you take that question number two and read it out loud and then give us the answer? What is the order of mathematical operations? And what is that order? The order of operations are parentheses, exponents, multiplication, and division from left to right, addition and addition and subtraction from left to right. Okay. Group two. Group two. Right here. Would you read me the first question? Work the problems out that the college professor placed on the board. Okay. Did you work them out? Uh, yeah. And did you come up with the same answer that he came up with? No. How come? 
He didn't follow the order of operation. He did not follow the order of operation. Okay? So, aren't you glad your teacher didn't write that in? Make sure you follow the order of operation. So, all I said was work the problems out, right? Very good. What are some clues that Cal saw that convinced him that there was a problem with the professor's teaching? Okay, what were some clues? Um, one of them was he was he stuttered when he said, and these are my um, uh, students. Two, he just did it in the order that it was on the on the board. And what do we call that group? Orders of operation. Orders of operation. Okay, now I'm going to read to you the answer from the book. When doing the two math problems, the man neglected to use the mathematical order of operations in which, if there are no parentheses dictating otherwise, multiplying and dividing are always done before adding and subtracting. This is basic math that any real math teacher would have known. If you correctly follow the order of operations, the answer to the first problem is 14, not 16, and the answer to the second problem is 31, not 35. I hope you will enjoy the video presentation from my sixth grade class. Uh, we have been doing a lot of differentiation in math, but differentiation is not only done in math, I, I incorporate it in all other academic areas. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.